What's up guys, Carden Kid here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade your mini bike brakes from the crappy mechanical ones that I like to seize um, to some brand new hydraulic ones. If you have a fast bike like one of these or you like to do wheelies and want to have a good handbrake, um, I severely recommend uh, one of these. They're about 30 bucks on Amazon, they're for an ATV. Um, you can also get ones that are specific for these bikes so you won't have to cut and weld anything. Um, I got the bigger ones because I wanted as much braking power as possible, but I will show you guys the procedure for doing the other ones as well. So obviously the bolt patterns on these ones and that one don't match um, just because, you know, these are built for an ATV go-kart style. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is cut out a new plate and cut out this old one um, so that the brakes will sit right there. Again, if you're just doing it the simple way um, and you just want to swap them on, all you do is remove the two bolts from the old one and slap the new one in and it'll just be set and ready to go. You might have to bleed it, which I'm going to do at the end, um, but yeah. I'm going to grab my grinder, put a cutting disc on it. some pretty short um, little metric bolts. Um, I believe this is a eight millimeter um, thread. I don't remember the exact pitch, but there's that. I'm gonna grab those other pieces. I think I'm just gonna mark it where it needs to be cut and cut it. So now that we have this first little piece in here, I'm going to mock it back up again. Alright, so I had to run off and do a little side mission, um, but Tonight now, we're going to be tacking up the rear mount for the hydraulic brakes. Um, I have everything mocked up so that nothing is contacting. Um, the one issue with these brakes is they are pretty wide, so depending on how wide um, your brake rotor is from the actual wheel, it might not clear. So before you put one of these on, make sure that's um, possible to clear before it's rubbing. And then uh, besides that, I'm just going to tack it up once or twice take the caliper off and then weld it up fully. Um, there may be some splatter on the rotor, but in past experience I've just been able to take it off with a chipping hammer or something. Um, again, this isn't my daily driver. I don't care that much, but you know we're just gonna be doing as much as we can to keep it all intact. So I'm gonna attack this real quick, get my ground clamp on. This rear mount welded in last night. I just have it loose. Um, gonna be putting this new one in. Um, I'm just gonna have it come up like an angle off of the original mount and go in there. Um, so I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit, make it a little prettier, um, and then hold it in.
so got all that cleaned up just getting ready for paint right now so I'm gonna set everything up um, let that cool for a bit longer and put everything together well it's not the greatest but whatever All right, phone's almost dead, so the flashlight is not um, consistent right now, but everything's dried for the most part. Um, I have it just mocked up. It's looking really clean right now. The one thing I did realize I did screw up was um, when I mocked everything up, I didn't use the correct size bolt just because I didn't have it yet. Um, so it can screw in, it just can't screw all the way in. When it gets to the head, it gets too wide. So I'm gonna create some sort of custom um, nut or whatever um, to kind of go down there maybe just weld a few tags in place just so I can hold that up but besides that it's going good Once you got the brakes installed, um, normally this would not be an issue, although in order to get the little piece um, that goes in between the two pads that it comes from from the factory, I had to uh, release the bleed screw just to get some of the pressure off so I could pull it out. Um, so in this case, as you can see, it just goes straight to the bottom, no resistance. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is grab an 8mm socket and loosen that up. And then I usually like to grab a little bit of clear fuel line um, and just slap it over there. I'm going to have to use the other side, but um, put it over there and make sure it stays up towards the top. You can zip tie it or whatever. Obviously, is it going to stay on there? But um, if you use newer fuel line, it's not going to have an issue. Um, so I'm going to get that all zip tied up and then we'll start the bleeding process. All right, so once you have the bleed valve open, you're gonna wanna go over to the handlebars and pull the lever. So as you can see, the fluid is starting to come up. There's gonna be some air in there. So just keep pumping until it gets relatively high up. Stay about right there and hold it. Um, and then I can't do this one-handed, but while you're doing it, um, as you hold that down, you're gonna wanna start to tighten this back up. The other thing you can do um, is if they are refusing to bleed, take the handle master cylinder off, um, hold it all up in the air, and keep pumping it up here as all of the air will rise and hopefully get out of the system. Just keep doing it until you don't see bubbles uh, and then seal it back up and you should be good to go. Alright, so once everything is topped off, you're going to go ahead and reinstall the cover. Honestly, I might go ahead and get different torque converter weights for it um, because it's such a high stall. 
that honestly it makes me a little uncomfortable doing wheelies. I also just haven't done wheelies in forever, so I kind of suck. Um, but the brakes work great. Any any speed, they just lock up the rear wheel. That's how you put on uh, mini bike brakes. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and tune in for next week's video.